Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. Hope you're all doing well and had a good uh, trading week. Uh, only a few more uh, weeks, uh, trading weeks, I guess, before really the end of the year. I think uh, trading really starts to slow down um, around mid uh, to late December and late December meaning maybe the second to third week of December. So few more weeks to go um, before 2022 we say goodbye anyways um, don't forget to like subscribe and share if you like the uh, videos that I provide every week and also as well just as a quick reminder an update um, I was saying that I wanted to release this uh, this uh, webinar uh, that I recorded on the 3rd of November and um, I set a new target for 10% YouTube likes so one in 10 of you to just like uh, the video if you do like it of course if you don't um, then it is what it is right but um, we failed to uh, reach that target as well so um, uh, unfortunately I can't release this I can make maybe one more go of it if we can do it this time around this week for this video, uh, lots of information I've got for you, especially from uh, some bank analysis as well from uh, uh, JP Morgan, right? And um, it's just stuff that you can't get anywhere else. Um, but uh, if you do like this video, it costs you nothing to just like it. And um, if we can get at least 10% um, in terms of uh, the views versus the likes, um, then um, I will release this webinar, which is forecasting forex trends that last for months, and I have, um, you know, a uh, lot of uh, information in here, and it really kind of just gets down to the meat and potatoes of um, of what you really need to know about fundamental analysis and forex, anyway. So, just uh, like, subscribe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, especially the likes. Um, Ten percent at least of uh, in comparison to the views so if we have a thousand views we need at least a hundred likes and um yeah let's uh, i want to get this information out for you but you've got to do something for it just like it right just like the video anyways um let's get into the week ahead and the week ahead uh, is found on trading economics and i'll zoom in and so um it'll be a very busy week uh, in the us with the labor report uh, taking the central stage followed by speeches by several fed officials second estimate of gdp growth which isn't actually that important um because the first estimate um is really the most important second estimate should be close to uh, the first sorry the first um uh, number and data and unless unless this uh, second estimate is totally way off and which which would surprise the market but typically they are quite close um ism manufacturing pmi cb con uh, consumer confidence and personal income and spending also potential will be given to inflation rate releases for the euro area germany france italy spain and indonesia finally third quarter data growth rates will be published for canada so this is their first one um, so this is going to be important for Canada uh, in, and Switzerland and manufacturing PI, PMIs for China, Canada and Australia. You know, those currencies that we're, they're, we're looking to trade. Of course, the, uh, there are some details if you want to read that. Go to uh, tradingeconomics.com uh, and click on the uh, week ahead uh, tab. I think it's actually probably the, uh, yeah, the one at the top. Normally, it might be in here somewhere, but it's at the top. So click on that and then you can have a read of their synopsis. Anyways, getting on to the technicals and some further fundamentals. And starting off from the dollar index. And dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, uh, various currencies or the major currencies. And we've had this... Um, you know, we had this m massive sell-off um, a few, maybe about two weeks ago or so, based off of uh, CPI figures um, coming in slightly lower than expected. <clears throat> but now the, uh, the 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 dollar is actually finding um, value in and around this area. So between the 105.32s and the 107, um, but well, 108s, right? So um, I do think that the dollar is still a buy. My bias is for dollar buys, and that's based off of fundamentals, and that's also backed up by uh, some bank analysis. And so um, we did, there is some some not so great headlines in, uh, in Bloomberg. It says, it says that the treasury market's Big recession trade is gathering momentum, so investors see uh, rates lower over longer term, even as Fed hikes and slew of data um, 
of key data coming up on jobs manufacturing and inflation so the bond market which is really the, the smartest market um in the world because they are especially in and very relevant to um to uh, forex trading because they understand um the economy and this and how inflation and gdp can affect um uh, bond yields and prices um and so uh, and it's basically the same things that we look at in terms of uh, forex fundamentals and so you know the bond market is definitely something to um to uh, to take uh, uh, seriously and the bond market is zeroing in on a us recession next year with traders betting that the longer term trajectory for interest rates will be down even as federal reserve is still busy raising its policy rates along dated treasury yields already below the fed's overnight benchmark um, and there is still an extra percentage point of uh, of central bank increases priced in for the coming months and so it says activity has also emerged in the options market that suggests some are hedging against the risk that uh, policy rates could eventually half uh, from their currency for sorry from their current levels um so that's very interesting very interesting um that a potential recession or the, mon the bond market is pricing in a potential um recession but there are um, some positive signs in at least in the short term and the US jobs report is likely to show subtle progress uh, for the Fed, right, eco week. So payrolls may show a uh, second month of decelerating labor market. And it talks about the, um, the latest reading of the US labor market on Friday is expected to show job growth on um, on more of a downward glide path sought by the federal uh, policy federal reserve policy makers in their fight to beat back inflation so so payrolls are projected to have risen about 200,000 in November a second month of decelerating gain such growth while moderating is nonetheless consistent with solid hiring that will extend the fed's rate hike campaign into 2023 right that's important um and so again um if you're looking at you know um jobs that is really an indication of or one of the major indications of how well the economy is doing you know hiring and um or, or the amount of hiring that's going on unemployment employment rates and so um you know the numbers already been priced in at the moment so if you do get somewhere around um the 200,000 uh, mark and figure then um that is actually what the federal reserve wants and as they say um it will uh, you know solid hiring that will extend the fed's rate hiking campaign in 2023 there's also as well cpi that must be watched and if cpi comes out as expected as far as maybe something like um around a 7.7 .7 or even a bit higher than that will also extend uh, the rate hiking cycle for the fed because they need to try and get inflation down and if it doesn't come down naturally then they're going to have to try and you know force it down with uh, continued interest rate hikes which then would make the um the dollar a buy right it's, the, it's still a buy now um Another thing that is going to, you know, support the the dollar, which isn't necessarily always spoken about, is risk uh, off and China, right? Uh, COVID unrest boils over as citizens defy lockdown efforts. So there's um, COVID is uh, is on the rise in China. Uh, lots of protests going on, and um, with COVID lockdowns comes um, obviously uh, the effect is. The economy, right? An economy can't grow if citizens are in their homes and being, you know, locked, locked up or locked down. So, um, with that becomes risk off sentiment and risk off sentiment. The dollar has benefited and does benefit in a risk off environment as well. So, um, that also kind of supports uh, the dollar, um, and this basically backs up. The, uh, the data this was from MUFG and uh, many of the guys who are in the you know members discord area you know have access to this information and so you're seeing you know a rise in coronavirus this coronavirus uh, China confirmed cases and it's uh, you know basically uh, going higher and higher and so um, also as well um, going back to the dollar as well um, you know, a lot of traders will look at, you know, this dollar 
you know, pullback as something of, uh, you know, of a reversal. When in fact, if you're looking at this being dollar value, um, again, this is a, a chart uh, from MUFG that I pointed out a couple of weeks ago when we did have the actual, you know, ma um, major move to the downside a couple of weeks ago when, when the CPI data came out. I was saying, in fact, prices are just coming down to fair value because if you talk about, you know, the um, the deviations of price. And if you're looking at this just simply from a, an expensive and bargain, you know, perspective, um, you know, the dollar was expensive up at the 115s, right? The 114s, 115s. Now we're coming back down to the 105s. Yeah, that is fair value, right? The mean or the average is also known as fair value. And so for me, um, buying a dollar at highs, you know, is, is never really the best thing to do. And so, um, you know, I look at this, you know, pullback as just a buying opportunity and it makes all the sense in the world. So going back to the technicals, spent a while on those fundamentals for me. Um, buys, right, right here. Demand. Um, and that's not to say that prices are going to bounce from here, right? Nobody knows. But um, for me, there there is some support around here looking at at least the 105s, maybe the 104.50s. And this is also data dependent as well. Also as well, I think I've got it on the next slide. Right, yeah. Um, this is a report from Goldman Sachs, in fact, which kind of is slightly contradicts one of the um, one of the reports we're talking about in terms of uh, the treasury market pricing in a potential US recession next year. Um, it says uh, that Goldman Sachs, who, who is you know the smartest guys in the room, right? When they release a report, which isn't necessarily available to you know the public, and thank you to Drew Stevens um, for posting this. He's a um, an honorary member of the of the group and um, and quite plugged in into uh, you know um, in the industry. Um, he shared this with the, with the group, and it says our central case. This is their latest report, right? Is and this was uh, maybe. a couple of days maybe earlier this week they released this so it says our central case is one in which the u.s economy sees a slow but gradual cooling in inflation which is fine uh through 2023 while avoiding a recession right so that's you know that is quite key so there's you know a 50 50 chance the last time i saw the probabilities of of a potential recession goldman sachs again think that there's not going to be one and so um you know, and even if there is one, again, even in comparison to, for example, the, the UK, which we'll get on to in Europe, um, the US is still best place because they're not in a recession yet. Whereas the UK and Europe um, actually are, um, are probably likely to enter into a recession sooner. So for me, with them going into a recession sooner than the US, for me, the, uh, the, the, the dollar is still a buy, right? It's still a buy regardless of what prices are doing, you know, to the, uh, uh, you know, in, in the short term, because smart money buy low, right? They look for value and this is basically a value or potentially a value area if you understand, you know, how to value, you know, a currency. So um, for me, buys all the way, if you do want to get short and it's not buying on the dollar index, of course, it's just uh, looking at the dollar index as confluence. So it's come down to a nice uh, level where it's shown that it's a bargain right around here. And our prices are coming back to the 105s. And this could be, again, another potential bargain. It might slightly go a bit lower to the 105s round number into that second zone around here before uh, going higher. So um, I'm just looking for buy trades on the uh, other dollar pairs, not all of them, of course, but um, that's what I'm looking at anyway. Um, dollar yen, dollar yen, um, again, pretty much similar in terms of the dollar being um, a potential buy, at least in the short term. There are reports that, um, in fact, the yen could strengthen into 2023, and that is a theme as well, um, or should strengthen into 2023. So I do think any pullbacks um, into maybe uh, the 146s and even the 150s, if there are any, actually are quite decent uh, shorting opportunities. If you are, if you do want to get long on the uh, dollar yen, I think now is a decent time. Not necessarily the strongest area of demand, not at all. Might want to wait for maybe the 137s if it can get down there. Of course, nobody knows. No one knows where the turning point is going to be. 
That's why we uh, manage our risk, right? And um, on, on trades and enter into small positions. Um, but uh, I think this is a decent area to potentially look for a potential long trade. Um, I, say, I say decent, it's okay, it's it's okay. But um, I think the better area is probably gonna be the one, three, sevens is where I would probably look towards uh, getting long if I was trading this pair. But I'm not really that interested in, in this pair at the moment. Um, Dollar Swiss, again, similar thing, right? We found some demand, right? Strong area of demand right here, and then prices bounced off of that area, even after this massive sell-off. We're back down here again. Um, you know, the first touches of levels are generally the uh, the strongest um, uh, or the best area, best times to look for, for long trades. Uh, second area is not so much, again, doesn't mean that it can't reverse here, but if you get maybe a, a move to the downside um, before going higher and you want to be a buyer of the uh, US dollar over the Swiss franc, then that is um, a trade. Again, I'm not really interested in, in this pair, although I am a buyer of the Swiss franc. I'm definitely a buyer of the Swiss franc, but just not against the dollar. So, um, yeah, it's not my... Uh, it's not the pair that I'm looking to trade. There are definitely better trades out there. But if you are looking for long trades and buying the US dollar, then that's where you need to... Be positioned and if you're looking for buying the Swiss franc then you're looking for the 95 50s to 96 area to look for buy trades there uh, dollar CAD and um, and so again we've uh, kind of established a bit of a you know buy and a short trade there so um, some supply and demand in either area again not really a pair that I'm interested in although if you know what if I was going to be a buyer of one of the two I think the dollar is in is is best placed um, looking for especially with risk off and Canada being more of a risk on currency I think that's a decent uh, area to look for a potential buy if you do want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar if prices do come back up to the 135s 13550 is put at the top end of this area of this uh, supply zone I think that's decent technically for a uh, for a short trade but again not really the um, pair that I'm interested in New Zealand dollar um, interesting so um, zooming out a bit always zoom out um, the New Zealand dollar, the RBNZ, their central bank, ended up hiking rates a bit more than expected. But uh, to counter that, as we've just seen, uh, there are problems in China with the COVID you know, uh, issues that they do have. And so um, that may affect the, um, the New Zealand dollar because of their uh, proximity geographical lo location. Uh, with and the trade, I guess the, the trade partners with China, and so right now um, with risk off New Zealand not being a risk off currency, the dollar being a risk off currency. That if the dollar does start start to strengthen, uh, based off of uh, you know risk off, then um, I think this is a decent short. But the problem is if you're sticking to you know the uh, supply and demand rules, you did kind of get a close above that area. And so, um, yeah, it's um, it's not really much you can do with with, with that strategy. Um, but if you do want to be a buyer of this currency, uh, then you're looking at uh, demand zone. If you want to continue to potentially buy a trend, um, and you don't, you know, really care about fundamentals, of course, don't know why you would be here if you didn't care about the fundamentals, but. Um, if you do want to be a buyer in the New Zealand dollar, then you know pull back into this uh, 61.50s to 61 or 60.65s would be a decent area to look for buy trades. But with risk off, I do think the path of least resistance now is actually probably to the downside. And let's see. Um, I think you probably got some confluence in the round here. This might be, might 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 be a, a fib um, technical confluence. Nah, actually went way above that, didn't it? Yeah, that was where you know, a lot of fib traders would pretty end up getting short and then probably been squeezed now. But um, but yeah, I do think uh, this area here is is for the um, is is for the short. Not really a pair that I'm looking to trade, uh, but a pair I am looking to trade is the pound dollar. And we've just had this massive run, um, taking a lot of traders by surprise. I mean, there's no real reason to really want to buy the um, the pound, but 
I was saying um, earlier in the week to the traders in the room that um, when you have the Thanksgiving weekend and uh, happy Thanksgiving to anyone who was uh, who was celebrating um, and had the time off, what can happen is is that you get um, light, you know, trading, and so uh, markets can uh, be pushed in certain directions, right? And if you had a lot of stop losses above a certain area, right, whether it's pounds, whether it's you know dollars right then you can get that you know uh, that move to the upside for me it's, it's more of a short squeeze liquidity hunt this whole move here there's no way i'm looking to buy the pound not at all um and you know we talk about you know the 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 um the dollar and the us potentially going into a recession and, and questioning whether they will or whether they won't whereas for example the uk you know, UK recession worsening, worsening as living costs squeeze bites. PMI shows so readings suggest economy is shrinking at a 0.4% quarterly rate. Services to see largest fall in new orders since January 2021. So the UK economy is in recession with the downturn expected to worsen heading into 2023. A key survey warned, right? Um, you also have, for example, the UK business confidence dropped to lowest since pandemic pandemic lockdown so UK business uh, confidence has dropped to its lowest since March 2021 when the country was struggling with coronavirus lockdown despite some firms expecting an improvement in trading prospects that's the conclusion of Lloyds Bank PLC business um, barometer which said confidence for 1% to 15% in its October survey. The number of employers expecting to increase staffing levels rose for the first time in five months, and almost half of firms also report a better outlook, right? And so um, it's not looking great for the UK, right? Regardless of how bad you might think, you know, the headlines are for the US, the UK is in a worse position. And a lot of times price doesn't always reflect value, which is the reason why you can buy for cheaper, right? This becomes starts to become cheap and things can stay cheap for, for a while, but eventually value will show its, um, show its face. And really smart money, I think a lot of smart money were, uh, um, you know, understood and understand to go short, but if there's not enough liquidity for the downside, or to the downside, downside to facilitate the selling, then it has to search for it above the market. And I think this has just been um, one of those, um, you know, yearly events, one once or twice a year event where you do get um, short squeezes. Right? I, I ended up losing a trade here, but as I said last week, don't care if I lose the trade, um, you know, around here because ultimately I've got back in around here, and my risk reward, in fact you know, is now a lot better. If I'm right about this trade, um, then I have actually um, a, a lot more downside potential than I would down here, right? So from that perspective, um, you know, I don't mind losing, you know, a trade or two or three if I'm going for, you know, eight, nine, 10, 15 to one type trades. So um, yeah, that's where we are. Of course, prices could actually even go higher this week, right? Who knows? And in fact, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me if prices eventually ended up kind of going towards the one, two, twos, one, two, threes. It wouldn't surprise me, and even slightly above that. But ultimately, um, there's a lot of uh, bank analysis suggesting that, you know, there's. Um, uh, you know, to, to really kind of buy the dollar and go short on the um, on the uh, on the pound. Um, so that's my analysis. If you do want to be a buyer of the pound and you do want to be a trend follower, then you're looking at uh, buying at that uh, that area there. There's a nice demand zone around the, just below the 119 areas to look for a potential buyer. But for me, this is you know very. Um, undervalued in terms of uh, the dollar and so uh, yeah I'm positioned again getting um, getting short on this again so uh, let's see what happens there euro dollar again euro dollar is kind of stalled out and so we see um, uh, here we are a bit of demand there but we've you know touched this supply zone once and potentially uh, again twice again I'm short on this as well on the euro dollar and um, I was short actually in and around uh, here a couple of weeks ago we've pulled back 
and uh, hopefully we do get a bit of a rollover whether it's this week or next week and again even if um, you know prices go higher I'm still going to short because there's no reason to really buy um, the um, the euro and uh, euros Europe's two top economies contract as block already in recession is what they report into so French composite PMIs fell to a 20 month low uh, in November and German activity uh, gauge improves still in negative territory though so you know major problems major major problems with uh, with uh, the PMI data talking about expansion and contraction right and they're below the 50s so that's in the contraction area in terms of the uh, PMI data so um, again with that who is the dog with the least fleas for me it's going to be the uh, the US dollar so for me the uh, the, the regardless of what price has been doing in the short term um, I am going to be uh, still long on the dollar and so um, yeah that's where I'm positioned but if you do want to get long on the euro thinking that the euro is a bargain at that area in that zone that demand zone the 103s to 102.20s then um, you know uh, of course be my guest um, also as well I think there was I did say there was a JP Morgan report didn't I um, or did I actually do it that's Goldman Sachs that was that that was that one second in fact let me just pause and find it right so here it is um, JP Morgan uh, their latest report Euro Malays not inflection so prospects for a convincing rebound appear dim with energy dependence us flirting with recession tightening financial conditions and poor carry the baseline for 2023 looks for euro dollar to average to 95 in the first half of the year with a test towards the 90s possible and this is assumes that no deceleration in geopolitics so you know going back to the um the chart and where we are they think that prices should come back down to the 95s which is basically the lows of this area here and going down to potentially the 90s yeah but this is again assuming that um russia um and ukraine find an agreement there's a de-escalation and if there is a de-escalation then all bets are off the table in terms of selling the euro i'm going to be a buyer of the euro i'm just letting you know that now of course, it's not financial advice. This is just telling you what um, I would do if if, um, if there becomes an agreement and there's a de-escalation in the war, then um, you know the euro I think is definitely a buy. But um, as it stands right now, that's where J.P. Morgan, who are again smartest guys in the room, will uh, let in you know their forecasting to their you know paid clientele, right? So they're not trying to mislead anybody. Um, otherwise if they were constantly trying to mislead people they wouldn't be in business and this is not a pub that's not a public document that you can just get anywhere by the way and so um, this is where you know they're forecasting and so um, it just aligns with my fundamental analysis and and gives me confluence right so that's where I'm, that's why I'm looking for uh, for uh, some short trades um, in the round there and um, yeah that's really where, where I am looking at the Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar did come up again to a nice supply zone it's pulled back again I do think that with risk off seeing some risk off from China um, we should want to see prices start to um, you know move to the downside again it could whether it's there or there but I think um, if the market does start to take risk off into account then because it doesn't always do it doesn't always um, you know, uh, pay attention to, to risk sentiment. But if it does, then the dollar for me is going to be a buy. The Australian dollar is actually one of the currencies I'm looking to buy um, at some point soon, um, going into 2023. I think it's going to be one of the one of the best better currencies um, to look to buy if when things start to improve. So any pullbacks, um, I think, are you know potentially buying opportunities, but just not on the uh, not for the US dollar or against the US dollar. Uh, Aussie yen. Again, you would probably think the same thing in terms of risk off would mean that the Australian dollar should probably want to sell off and the Japanese yen strengthen. So if you do get um, an opportunity to go short um, with risk off and you want to trade that risk off uh, you know, theme and play, then any pullbacks to the 95s, I think are decent areas to look for short trades. Um, but into the new year, possibly I think 
the 90s and just below that are going to be really nice buying opportunities for the Australian uh, dollar. And finally, gold. Again, gold benefiting from a weaker dollar, um, but this might be slightly short-lived um, if prices can kind of come down into uh, any of these zones, I think that's going to be really nice, definitely nice buying opportunities for gold. If you believe that, uh, you know, the world is going into, you know, recession next year, things are going to get worse um, and gold, you know, typically is a hedge against inflation. And I would still say that it is um, regardless of what you're seeing in price. But um, in the short term, but I do think that gold is going to be a buy for 2023 and um uh, yeah, these are going to be the areas to look for potential buy trades. If you're looking at shorting and um, at least in the short term, then you're looking at a pullback to this area here before looking at getting a uh, short on gold. And again, that would probably coincide with uh, any kind of dollar strength. So if you start to see, um, for example, CPI, you know, uh, go higher, if you start to see, um, you know, jobs, for example, right, and employment is uh, is positive, then um, and employment, you know, is, is up, unemployment is down, then um, the dollar should strengthen, which would have, again, a pretty more of a short term effect on, on, on gold, um, because the Federal Reserve are going to potentially just, to, you know, just keep hiking, right? Um, so they raise their, uh, their terminal rate. Anyways, um, that's it for this week. Um, oh, also before I forget, um, Trading 180 mem uh, mentorship opens tomorrow, so Monday the 28th of November, which is tomorrow and closes on Friday the 2nd. So don't forget, if you do want to join and the final opening of 2022, so you only have about a week um, uh, to, to, to enroll. The next enrollment will be late January, early February, most likely early February 2023. So um, yeah, if you do want to join, um, go to the website trading180.com and uh, I look forward to working with you. If not, I wish you all the best for the rest of the year and into 2023. Take care and I'll speak to you all next week.